Hello. Welcome to my runcast. Happy Sankran. My least favorite holiday. <laughs> uh, Sankran lasts forever. For people who aren't familiar, Sankran is the Thai New Year. So Thailand has three New Years. They have the one where the calendar actually changes, which is January 1st, like the rest of the world. And there's a Chinese New Year, which is in like February and March. It's lunar, so it changes. And then the Thai New Year, Sankran, is on April 11th through like 19th. It's so long. It is the longest holiday. And uh, it's, the, it's the water splashing one, right? So people have seen these like videos or pictures of the like nationwide water fight. Um, the traditional Holloway, Holloway, the traditional holiday, like the way it's actually supposed to be uh, celebrated traditionally, is you sprinkle water. On the first day, you bathe the Buddha, like a statue, and then you start uh, on subsequent days, you go farther out from your immediate family. So on the next day, it's gonna be like your elders, like your parents, uh, your grandparents. Then you go to, you know, like in-laws or cousins, I don't know, uncles, stuff like that. So it's like a, it's like a widening circle of people that you go visit and sprinkle water. You wash their hands and their feet. And, uh, in that expression, it's actually really beautiful. And I like that part of Sankran. I've participated in that part of Sankran. I find that part really beautiful. But then, like maybe, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago or something, you would scoop water and like pour it on the shoulder of your neighbors or like people outside of your family. And then it became this like water fight thing. And it's gotten really out of hand. Like uh, you can't opt out of it, which is why I don't like it, is that the way I'm walking right now, today I'm already starting to see it, which is very early because there wasn't really much water play uh, during COVID. So like people are trying to make up for it. Um, it gets crazy. Like kids just sit on the side of the road with a hose and a kiddie pool and a bucket. And they just like, if you're in a car, they splash your car, they rub like clay on your face and like it's fun your first time and then when you've lived here for a long time I just hate it it's the same as like um maybe in New York how you like can't opt out of St. Patrick's Day like you're just gonna be in that traffic there's gonna be drunk people yelling at you all that stuff it'd be like if Mardi Gras was the entire country and for like nine days instead of one or two days so not my favorite but Happy Sankran for the sake of it being Thai New Year and as a traditional holiday, actually quite lovely in terms of uh, family and rippling out, extending out. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't have a fight right now, so I'm just training. So I'm getting a little bit like, I don't know if frustrated is quite the word, but the thing is, training is like this all the time. Like you have good days and you have bad days. You have days when things are just all coming together really well and days when it doesn't, it doesn't tend to be like you were awesome in the morning and you suck in the afternoon. Like for me, it actually does tend to be an entire day, but it's not multiple days. Like it really is. Everything changes like day by day. And when I have a fight, I've noticed that all of a sudden I give like a lot of significance to sucking. So like, I'll think it means something that I'm having a really bad day. Whereas when I don't have a fight, it doesn't matter. Like you just have to get through the day. Whereas you still like judge yourself and it still sucks. And it still requires like good mental practices, like mental hygiene practices. Um, but when you have a fight, for some reason for me, it's just much more significant. It's like, oh my God, I suck. Rather than like, today I suck. Today I suck. Today I really suck. I was uh, sparring with Yodkun Pan this morning and I just like, I couldn't get my shit together. Like, I don't know what it was. I kind of felt this coming up the past couple of days like I just felt um too tight and uncoordinated and just not flowing kind of thing and I'm not the kind of person or at the level or I don't know if any athlete actually just can flow all the time I don't think that's really a thing um I think that for the most part you accidentally get into flow at times and then eventually you can kind of learn how to turn it on but it's not necessarily like a faucet that you can always turn it on at will and I definitely can't I definitely am better at like letting go and being like, okay, well, if me trying to do this right now is not working and it's frustrating me, I'm just going to stop trying to do that. <laughs> like let go of the trying part. And this morning when I was getting so, uh, 
overwhelmed, I guess is kind of the word. Like I just felt like I couldn't do anything inspiring and I wasn't having fun. And I kind of thought to myself like, okay, I'm gonna call it. Like I'm just gonna, like when we take our break halfway through, I'm just gonna be like, that's it for today. And I like, I don't love doing that. Sometimes it's important too. Sometimes it's really good too. Like just, you know, start again tomorrow. Um, but sometimes you have to like push through it. And I was kind of like, oh, is today one of those days? Like, I'm not crying. Like I'm not having emotionally a really hard time. I'm just kind of like not feeling it. And it feels like I'm gonna put myself in a bad mood or I might get into a bad mental place by like pushing on this. But I was like, right, I'm gonna try something else. I'll just try to do something very specific, right? So instead of like, I'm not kicking or I'm trying to do this or trying to do that, I'm gonna do something specific, but it's not gonna be a pass fail. Like I'm gonna to try to kick more. Or I'm gonna to try to stay close. Like those are pass fail kind of things. Instead, what I decided to focus on is just feeling and being aware of where my weight was. So weight transfer is like this huge thing. It's beautiful and it's amazing when you actually start feeling it. But when you even see it, it's amazing. Weight transfer is something that was really taught to me by Chaktai Sasakun. It's fucking incredible. Like he just blew my mind when he started teaching me weight transfer on punches because that's where he teaches it, but it applies to all of Muay Thai. Like it doesn't have to be boxing. Um, but then because I had understood this just at its base from Chak Chai, like I wasn't good at it yet. I just kind of like felt it and could see it. Then what I saw Karahat was teaching me when he was trying to teach me how to read which is reading where your opponent's weight is. And so you know whether they're able to block something or whether they're doing an offense and you need to block, uh, whether they're capable of blocking what it is that you're about to do because of where their weight is. This is reading someone's shape. So like the way that when you first start reading, you're like looking at letters and sounding it out and you're like, cat, pancake, like that kind of thing. Eventually you just see the shape of the word. You just see the shape of the letter and you don't think to yourself, that's a C. Like you see the shape and you recognize it really quickly. This is what Karahat's doing when he's reading is that he like sees the shape of a person really, really fast. And he knows what they're capable of doing or not doing in that moment. And it makes him like the Flash. He's just unbelievably fast. Quicksilver, because Quicksilver is a cooler character than the Flash. He's like Quicksilver. Um, so this morning when I was like, I'm just gonna observe my weight transfers. What that means is uh, I was paying attention to is my weight mostly on my back foot while I'm doing this? Or is it mostly on my front foot? Or am I dead in the middle? I'm almost never dead in the middle, even though that's a really good place to be. Shifting back and forth between the two so that you end up being 50-50 is good. And being right over both your feet, like in the middle, awesome for generating power. But just watching, like observing and not even judging, not like I should be on this other thing, like literally just which foot is my weight on? I was doing that and seeing, is my weight forward enough when I'm doing offense? And is my weight back enough when I'm doing defense? And is this why I'm slow? Or is this why I'm having a hard time defending? Or is this why I'm missing? Or I'm off balance when I come down? And all of it makes sense. Like all of it, the math was mathing. Everything that should be because of where my weight was, was true. And uh, so I started focusing more on like, okay, noting that my weight is not far enough forward on my offense. How about I just kind of shift it forward a little bit and I started leaning a little bit more forward on my kicks. And all of a sudden, Yoshin Pond was like, your kicks are so scary. And I started laughing because I'm like, I have 281 fights and I've probably kicked 40 times. Like, I don't kick. And I'm like, I know my kicks are good, but I'm just not brave to do the entire you say, blah, means like you're brave enough like to do something. I'm like, my God, like I, I know that I can kick, but I'm not brave to do it. And he's like, oh, you are, you are, you'll do it. But I was thinking to myself, being off balance really affects whether you feel like you can do something or not. And it's not you being aware of the fact that you're off balance. You feel off balance and your body is like, no, this is a thing that happens. I was watching some fighter on TV. It was a while ago, so I can't remember who it was, but uh, he really liked to clinch. Like he would get into the clinch a lot. And at first he was doing really well against his opponent, but after about one round, he just started getting really stagnant in the clinch and he would grab and he had an okay position, but he just wasn't scoring. And I turned to Kevin. Hello! <laughs> I turned to Kevin. These cute little girls. Uh, I turned to Kevin and I was like, he feels not grounded enough to throw any of his weapons. So like in clinch when he's at his gym or whatever, he 
holds with his arms and then he feels balanced and then he can throw a knee. And against this opponent, who isn't letting him get the lock that he's used to, he feels like he can't throw the knee because he feels like he's not based, like he feels like he's not balanced, and maybe he's afraid of being thrown. I'm not like psychic. I've experienced this. I have for a long time through stages of my career had this same thing where I'm like, I don't want to throw any weapons because I don't feel base. It was a huge problem when I was clinching with the boys at Petronrung when I first moved down here because they threw me all the time and I didn't want to be thrown. And so I wouldn't bring my feet up. And so I really wanted to get like a good base. And when you have a really good base, you can't get off of it. You don't want to let go of the one monkey bar you have to go to the next monkey bar because you're not sure how to get there. You don't have any swing, right? And Kevin gave me very good advice back in the day. He was like, just be thrown. He's like, let yourself be thrown so that you can learn the balance. Like eventually your body will start solving being thrown rather than your mind trying to solve being thrown because your mind is like, just don't move. That's really good advice. Um, but you know, hi baby. This dog's ears. This dog's ears are the cutest. Look at him go bounce, bounce, bounce. Hi honey. I don't know. There's like three generations of puppies around here. There's like a million of them. get petted see same word if you're not brave enough to kick you have to be a brave puppy to get pet my god god um so now i can't remember how i got on this topic of oh so paying attention to my weight transfers paying attention to balance if you focus on things that give you better balance like um this can be weightlifting. this can be um certain kinds of, you know, literally balanced techniques on like a, a wobble ball or whatever the thing is, anything you can do to improve your balance overall, this is actually going to grow your confidence, whether you're aware of it or not, because being balanced gives you physical confidence to do a lot of things. So if you're someone who is experiencing like, oh, I'm amazing on pads, but I'm really not that good in sparring and I don't understand why, like, why am I scared? I don't actually feel scared, but I'm like scared or I don't want to stand close, even though I can totally stand close in other formats, you're unconsciously scared because your body is not in the same balanced position that it is when you're not under pressure. So when you're like kicking a bag or kicking pads, assuming that you're not afraid of your pad man, or he doesn't throw a lot of stuff back at you, your overall like body position is one of confidence and comfort and balance because your balance is not really being challenged. By having someone stand in front of you who intimidates you or who like you don't know or they're doing unorthodox things or they're not standing where your pad man stands, all of those things create very, very subtle mental things that make your like body positioning, like your body mapping be slightly off. And then you feel really uncomfortable and you don't know why. And you're like, I don't understand why I can do this on a bag or on pads and I can't do this in front of a person. You're literally standing different. Like you, uh, you can become aware of it. When you become aware of that fact, you can actually start figuring it out, like scan your body and be like, oh my God, my feet are totally not in the same position they are when I'm in front of a bag. Or like I lean my head way too far forward when I'm standing in front of someone because I'm trying to like curl and defend myself. Whereas in front of a bag, I'm a little bit more like relaxed. Balance is a huge thing. So this morning I kind of saved my sparring. I didn't end up, <laughs> I didn't end up having a great time even though I finished it out focusing on that thing, but I gave myself a purpose and I think that I learned something. Like I, I think that I benefited from taking those rounds to be more observant of where my weight is. And it doesn't mean I'm going to know it now forever. Like, because I did it that one time and I'm aware of it all the time. That's not, that's not how it is. It's like learning a new word and it slips from your mind. Like, what is that word again? It's like that. Like you're going to have to be reminded of it. I'm going to have to remember it a couple of times. Hopefully it'll become something that I'm aware of enough that it'll become more consistent. But I'm glad that I was able to observe it. I'm glad that I was able to kind of, you know, suck it up and apply it to those later rounds today because I might necessarily not have thought to do it on a day when I'm doing better or on a day when I don't feel like quitting or whatever those things are. So 
uh, yeah, that was my that was my save from this morning. I don't know if you can see the sunset. It's really nice. It's very pretty. Um, yeah, so I'll try to focus on that a little bit more. This is, there's this dog here through this little door. When I'm on my motorbike and this dog sees me, she won't let me pet her. She won't even come up to take the treat from my hand. She makes me put it on the ground and then she makes me get back on my bike and start driving before she'll eat it. But when she sees me on my bike, she knows I have treats and she will run across the street to like make me stop my bike and give her treats and still won't let me pet her. She's, she's got boundaries. Um, yeah, I keep losing my train of thought because these, uh, these dogs are like making me so excited. I love, I love dogs. Um, yeah. Oh, oh. So this afternoon, just now, I'm running back from the gym. Uh, I was at Sir Clint May, and there's this trainer, Crew B. So Crew B actually was who held cats for me when I first came to the gym, which surprisingly was a little bit more than a year ago. I can't believe I've been there that long. Um, but he's femur. He's like totally like a scrappy little uh, kind of high energy, but uh, not trying to use a lot of it, Padman. Um, he's kind of funny, but he doesn't like, he doesn't really play that much. Um, so I, I don't love this. Like I don't, I don't love um, pad work that's just like very systematic or like high rep of everything just to get you tired. That's good for you, but I don't enjoy it. So I'm not always happy when Pappy is like, you're gonna go with Krupi instead of with him. But I'm like, all right, you know, I'm a good student. I'm not gonna cry about it. Just get out of it what you can. Same thing about like, I'm gonna use these rounds to focus on my balance or whatever the thing is. So I started playing a little bit with Krupi in pad work. And he started playing back a little bit. Like he kind of usually doesn't do that, but he kind of got into it today, which was funny. And then we were both like calling out different fighters. So he's femur, so he's just calling out all femur names. Like he'd do like the little Ali shuffle step and be like, Sanchai. And then uh, I was doing things from Dieselnoy and Chamuk Pet. Like we're totally different generations. Um, and uh, then Tapia had me clinch with him. We're similar in size in terms of like, he's not much taller than me, but he outweighs me by a lot. Um, I had so much fun clinching with him. Like I thought it was actually going to be a little bit of a drag because I thought that he would actually just be like punishing me and throwing me around <laughs> and like trying to wear me out because I have a lot more uh, power to burn than he does. So I thought he'd take advantage, but he's actually really, really fun. And he uh, put on his phone, um, I think he was streaming it live on his Facebook page. <laughs> so anytime you get a man who's like got a little bit of an audience, they'll go a little bit harder and they'll play a little bit better, which was for me really really funny. We we're uh, throwing each other around and knees and elbows and all that different type of stuff. So I had fun. Uh, that's the second part of um, unexpected. So this morning, like I, I didn't quit and I did the rest of the rounds thinking about something that would benefit me. And today, instead of being a sourpuss about like, I didn't get to clinch with the person I want to clinch with, I got to clinch with Crew B. And uh, it was a fun experience for both of us. So that makes me really happy. Thank you to Crew B for doing that work with me and uh he um he's probably in his 40s like early 40s and uh he and Tapia were telling me like all these different former fighters who he works with he teaches in Mel uh, not Melbourne in um Brisbane so he's here now because he came back and then he has to renew his visa and he's gonna go to Brisbane and that's why I haven't seen him since when I first came to the gym um but he's talking about all these fighters that are with him at this gym and they're naming all these names. And Tapia's like, how do you not know these people? You know everybody. And I'm like, I don't, what year are they from? Like, when were these people fighters? And he tells me, and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I don't really know fighters that much after the year 2000. And Tapia's like, wait, so if they were from my generation, you'd know who they were? I was like, absolutely. And the look on his face was so sweet. It was like this quiet pride because his fighters, his son, his, uh, his fighters are like 18 to 25 they never know any of the old fighters. Like when I'm calling out names, uh, when I'm clinching with Bank, he never fucking has any idea who the people are who I'm talking about. And I made fun of him for it once. I'm like, he only knows the new fighters. And he's like, I know old fighters. And then he named someone from like 10 years ago. And I'm like, that's not, that's not an old fighter. That's just a retired fighter. That's not the same thing. It's just very funny. All right. I'm giddy. I'm going to, get going. Thank you guys for listening to my yap yap and uh, happy sun crown. Have a good one.